Number 29, determine the standard cell potential and the cell potential under the stated conditions for the electrochemical reactions described here. And then state whether each is spontaneous or non-spontaneous under each set of conditions at 298.15 Kelvin. And then we have our first equation here. So in this case, we have to find the standard cell potential and the cell potential of HD liquid plus S2 minus. They give us uh, that it's 0.1 molarity. And then plus 2 AG plus, they tell me that that is 0.25 molarity. And that will all yield 2 AG solid plus HG uh, S solid. Okay, so it seems like we have to do two things here. We have to find a standard cell potential and just a, a regular cell potential. A standard cell potential is a E cell, because all cell potentials are E cells, but since we have the word standard here, that means we're under standard conditions, right? 1 ATM and 298.15 Kelvin. So I'm gonna have that little notch here. This little degree sign up at the top means that you're solving for standard values. And when you are solving for standard values, you are allowed to use the appendix values or the tables in a textbook to get the information that you need. However, for cell potentials that are not standard, this is just a random E cell, and it's under the conditions that they told you. So, First things first, let's find out that standard cell potential. If it's a standard cell potential, we're going into the back of the book to find out the half reactions that make up this equation. So it's kind of like doing a little digging at first. So I found the matching components that are in this equation, and we're going to use the formula, which is this one, right? The E cell equals the cathode minus the anode, because we are allowed to use those cell potential values um, in the back of the book. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm just going to put this over here. Before I even get to the math, I'm going to break this in half because I'm going to separate this out from standard and, you know, just, I guess, not standard, <laughs> you know, regular, we'll say not standard. Okay. So we're, we have to see notch values here. And it's the standard cell potential for the cathode minus the standard cell potential for the anode. That's these values in the back here, or, you know, on the bottom of your screen, but I found them in the back of a textbook. But the question is, well, which one of these half reactions is the anode and which one is the cathode? Well, that comes from analyzing the balanced equation that they gave you. Now, notice how in the back of the textbook, they give you the reactions always when your electrons are on the left side. If you see that you have electrons on the left side, just like all half reactions in an, in an appendix value, they are giving you the cathode values. So in this case, if we look at, you always pick the one that looks easier to do to, to you. So I see that I have AG plus and it's going to just the AG. Do you see that? AG plus is going to AG. Now I look on my half reaction and I say, is that the same or is it flipped? Well, in this case, I have AG plus going to AG. So it's the same, right? There's no flipping here. So this AG has to be the cathode. And remember, oxidation happens at the cathode. So you could also do it that way by looking at the electrons if you become more positive or more negative. But I'm just going straight to looking at these. On the flip side, if we look at the others, I see that I have HG and S2- minus going into HGS. Do you see how coming down here, the HGS was actually on the left side and the HG and the S2 minus are on the right. It seems like in our equation, it's flipped. When they're flipping that, that's the anode. So maybe I'll just put that, you know, these guys with this one is the anode. 
So now I know who's the cathode and who's the anode. The cathode is going to be the AG, and the anode is going to be your HG, right? Doesn't matter what you put under here. You could have put AG plus H, HG just by itself because you're still going to be using these numbers. So E cell equals the cathode value was the AG one. So it's going to be this one. So we'll do zero, 0 0.7996. And that's minus the anode, which is a negative 0 0.70. I just want to uh, point out here that if you're doing cathode minus anode, you do not have to flip any of the signs. The negative does it for you. And now let's just solve for the E cell. So 0.7996 minus a negative 0.7. Okay. And I guess for sig fig purposes, technically we only go out to the hundredths place here. So I'm only allowed to go to the hundredths place. So maybe I'll just say 1.50 and that's the unit of volts. So I found my standard cell potential of 1.50 volts. Let's just say if that's spontaneous or non-spontaneous, that's just going by what you know about the signs. If you have a positive E cell value or an E cell that's greater than zero, that's spontaneous. But if you have a negative E value, that's non-spontaneous. So since this 1.50 is a positive value, we know that this reaction is going to be spontaneous under standard conditions. All right. Now for our just a not standard cell potential, I am only looking for an E cell with no notch on the top. So I say to myself, are there any formulas that I know that just have an E cell with it? And there is, there's only one and it's here, right here. So maybe I will put this a little bit down here. Now I picked this one because this has the correlation between the not standard cell potential and the standard one. We just found out that, that value. So I'm going to plug that in here. Now, whether we use this for our um, sig fig purposes or we use the top number, since that's not the final answer here, it, it doesn't really matter. But since we, since we um, actually, I think we can get away. We can get away with just saying 1.50. But now we have all these other, we have all these other values. So let's see. Now the R value we've, we've seen in other chapters, the R value is a constant. And since we're talking about volts and that has everything to do with energy, we're using the energy R value, which is 8.314. The units is, I believe joules per mole times Kelvin, but it doesn't really necessarily matter here. It just has to be, um, it just has to be 8.314. Now the temperature is whatever the temperature that they told you in Kelvin. And thank goodness they told us that it was 298.15 Kelvin. The N is talking about the number of moles, but it's the number of moles of electrons that are being transferred in this equation. Now, the easiest way to do this is to just look down at your half reactions. Hopefully these electrons are already balanced, but they're not here. So you say to yourself, well, if we wanted to make a balanced equation, which is what this is, how would I balance these electrons in the easiest way? I would just take the bottom and times it by two because then I would have two electrons and two electrons. And if you notice that would give me two AG and look, that's why I have two AG here and I have two AG over here. So now how many total electrons are transferred? It's always going to be that number of electrons in your half reaction. So in this case, N is going to equal two. Now for F, 
that's another um, that's another constant value. This is Faraday's constant. Faraday's constant is ninety six thousand four hundred and eighty five. The units for Faraday's constant is coulombs over mole. So we have that. Now the only thing that's left is this Q value. Well, wait a minute. The Q value, that's going all the way back to equilibrium. Remember, in order to find a Q, it's just the basically the same formula as a K value. It's the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants, right? And you just have to be sure that you're raising the exponents to the coefficients. Coefficients. And keep in mind that only aqueous and gases are allowed. These two solids are not allowed because no solids and no liquids allowed in your K expression. So I have nothing for my numerator. That would be one. And now on the bottom, well, the HG is a liquid, so I don't incorporate that. But S2 minus is aqueous, so I'm going to put that one in there. So S2 minus. And there's no coefficient in front, so it's basically raised to the first. And then here I have the Ag plus, that's aqueous. Ag plus, and that has a 2 in front of it. So I have to square that. Well, now what were the concentrations that they told me? Well, the S2 minus, they told us that that was 0 0.10 molarity. And the Ag plus, they told me, was 0 0.25 molarity. So I first have to do this math in order to find out that Q. Oh boy, let's, let's go for it. Q equals 1 over 0 0.10 times 0 0.25 squared. Now maybe what I can do is I can just simplify this in the calculator. So I'll say 0.1 times 0.25, and then I'll raise that to the second. We could do that all by ourselves. So this basically is now going to be, whoop, hold on. I don't want that. This whole thing now is going to be 0 0.00625, and if I just say one divided by that answer, grab that answer, put it down there, I get 160. And that's the Q value that's going here. So pause the video if you need to, because I have to erase the Q values, and then we will move forward. So I'm just erasing all this Q math because we don't need it anymore. Goodbye. And now let's just plug in E cell equals the E standard cell, which we found of 1.50 minus, okay, I got a division sign here. We got LN of something. And then I have these two, these four values. So I got 8.314. That's the R value. I have the temperature, which is 298. 0.15. I have the n value, which was the two electrons, and then I have Faraday's constant, which is 96,485, and the Q value was 160. Oh my goodness. All right, so first things first, let's simplify this mess, <laughs> right? I mean, technically, there is a way in which you can plug this all into the calculator at once, but there's a lot of things going on here. So what I would do is I would just plug this all in just to kind of get that as one number. So we're back to the E cell of being 1.50 minus, let's do 8.314 times 298.15 divided by 2. And if you want that Faraday's constant and we're not using... Um, parentheses in the calculator, I have to press divided by 96,485. Let's press enter. And I get a slew of numbers. So keep in mind, don't round here. 
So I'm just going to put dot, dot, dot because I don't want to waste any time just writing out these values. And then we have the ln of 60. Now what you can do next is you can take this and times it by the ln of 60. Take the value that you just had and times it by the ln of 60. So that's what I'll do. E cell equals now 1.50 minus, I'm going to take this whole value. That's why I love the TI-84. You could just, you know, take stuff, times it by the ln of 160, close it up, boop. And another, you know, long decimal. It is not the final answer, so don't round, right? So when I do my math, I'll do 1.50 minus, take the whole value on the top, press enter, and there we go. We get an E cell value that's not standard of 1.43, and that's in volts. Okay. So, oh, and last thing is we just have to find out if this is spontaneous or not spontaneous. It's still a positive value, so this will still be spontaneous. And there you go. So both of them are spontaneous, but this one a little bit less so. We're dropping in value, but I hope this really helps you out. A lot of formulas here, but I know you guys got this. Keep studying hard. Let's practice, practice, practice. That's the only way that you're going to get better in these classes by just seeing so many different problems. And we have thousands of problems on the channel for you guys to do just that. So I hope you're enjoying the channel. I hope you're enjoying the process of learning, getting better, and it's kind of fun. I'll, I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.